So about a month ago, I posted a few pictures of my electric cooling fan that I had installed on the front of my Jeep. And um, got a lot of comments, a lot of people had questions and stuff about it. Um, so I decided to do a little short video about that. And also uh, my Ford 11 blade um, fan that I installed on here. And also how I modified the shroud and everything so that it would fit. Um, and while I'm doing that, I, like I said, I just bought this Jeep like eight months ago or something. And um, so I don't know what has been done to it. So I decided, well, at the same time, I'll put in a thermostat, make sure that I have the right one in there for out here in Arizona. Um, so if you want to come on over and take a look at this, uh, here's my electric fan installed. It's pretty basic. Um, I did have to do some trimming out right here in order to fit this in, in, behind, in behind the grill that goes here. Um, it fits in there pretty good. It's pretty tight. I did have to modify this bumper here and I also modified um, the grill section so that it would fit in there uh, but it does fit in nice and neat and it does work um, and if you come over here on the inside um, you can see that I mounted in a temperature sensor that's mounted inside the radiator fins right here um, and this right here is for my relay that's mounted on the side of my shroud I'll show you that in a second um, now this is pretty much just a basic install on this electric fan other than the modifications I had to do. Um, the other thing that I didn't do according to the directions was that your power lead you're supposed to pick up uh, from a place in your fuse box where it only gets power when you turn the key on. Well because I'm on the trail and a lot of times I'll drive for 10 or 15 minutes and then I'll stop and the truck will just sit there. What I decided to do was leave mine powered up so whenever this temp sensor that's down in the radiator there whenever it shows that it's hot this fan will run so it's capable of running when the key is turned off and sometimes this fan will run maybe a half an hour after I'm done uh, but that cools this radiator down so if I stop somewhere to look at some Indian ruins or something or to fly the drone or take some pictures um, this thing will still be cooling down while I do that so then when I jump back in it'll be nice and cool um, the other thing I did was the fan the mechanical fan on this one the 5.2 liter um, that fan is a five blade fan and here we have over here if you come and take a look at this right here this is that original fan and the original fan clutch so, and I know a lot of people were modifying these to fit this on here, um, this 11 blade fan. And what I did was I, I did modify it right in here so that it would fit around that and then bolted it straight to it. Um, I know a lot of people were spacing these out to move the fan um, back towards the motor a little bit because it was hitting the shroud. Well, to combat that so that I wouldn't have to do that, um, I did trim out my fan a little bit here, the shroud a little bit here, so the fan would fit a little bit better in there. Um, but as far as if you look, the fan hits on the inside of this shroud right here. So what I did is I trimmed these out on the edges to move the shroud closer towards the radiator. And that way it gives me enough room where my fan doesn't hit on the inside of this shroud because I wanted it to look pretty stock. And if you look at, the, at this one's original one, you can see the difference where I trimmed that out. So it gives you a good three quarters to an inch uh, spacing there so that you can uh, move that fan away from it. And that helps out a lot. So now you don't have any issues with that hitting. And the other thing is that I was going to, that I'm doing to it right now, is I pull the old thermostat out. You can see that there. So I don't know how long it's been in there. There's some silicone bit on it. Um, so I needed to change this and that's why I was doing that. So I got a new one here. It's a 195. So we're going to put this in and then we're going to, I'm also going to put in uh, all new cooling and everything. Because like I said, I don't know when um, this, this setup was originally put in there. So if I change it, I know where I'm at, and then I don't have to worry about it. So that's what we're going to do today. 
I'm going to go ahead and um, mount all this stuff back in here. Um, I just wanted to show that and show you how tight this is. And if you go to trim out this front bumper, make sure you are aware that there's a harness underneath it and behind it. That uh, You don't want to cut that harness. Um, that runs the front length of your car, and you don't want to damage that harness. It would be hard to repair and expensive. Um, so just be aware of that if you go to do that with your electric fan. And this does help the AC. I run this thing on the trails. Sometimes I'll be climbing up a section of rock or hills or something or up some sort of grade. And I have to have my AC on because like even today, it's 110 degrees out. So you can imagine what it's like when you're out in the middle of the desert and there's no shade, no trees, no nothing out there. Um, so that's why I run the setup that I have here. And this setup right here also allows you to repair it um, if you're in some small town or, you know, anywhere that you're at, you can just about get stock parts for this or something else to repair it. I also put a new belt on here. Uh, my old belt didn't break or anything like that. I just simply replaced it because now my old belt will go in the back. And if I have a problem on the trail or this belt breaks or anything like that, I've got a spare one in the back of my truck. Because when you're way out in the middle of nowhere, the last thing you want is a vehicle that's not going to run for you. And uh, I'm against that because I don't like to walk. Um, so, and that's, that's pretty much it on this right here. It's pretty basic. Um, and this does work. It does keep my uh, cooling system cool. So, um, and like I say, I'm out here in Arizona. So if your conditions are, are, are tougher than what we've got out here, you probably need to go to some extreme, extreme, extreme because uh, my temperatures are always 120 degrees out, 115 out. And once you go out into the desert, um, it gets really baking hot out there. So you gotta have a cooling system that's gonna work. And that's all there is to it. Um, so that's what we got going on here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and finish this up and then I'll show you what we got going on um, when I get all this back on. Okay, so I wanted to make sure everybody could see um, on my front grill, you can see where I kind of cut this out a little bit here. Um, that's from where my motor, the, the actual electric motor sits right there. I needed a little more clearance, so you might have to cut that just a little bit more to fit that in there. And there's the front of it, what it looks like. And it doesn't look too bad when it's up in there. Um, I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew that you're going to have to do some trimming somewhere in order to get that in there. And that's basically how that goes. And you can kind of see um, how it fits up in there. It's really snug and it's kind of sano in there. It looks pretty good. Um, fits perfect. Um, that's that. And the other thing I wanted to make sure that everybody understood was the reason why I spaced this fan back towards the radiator. And let me show you the other side of that. Now this is the original fan clutch and, um, and fan. And as you can see, it mounts flush against the surface where these screws go in, where the bolts go in. And that's how it's supposed to be. And a lot of people I know, they use uh, washers and put in here to space this fan back this way. And you just don't want to do that. And I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew that because not only will that throw this out of balance, it'll weight it different. It moves it to a different spot on the bearing that's in here. And also this in here, the big end, connects to your water pump. So you don't want to, you know, have this really off balance or you're looking for trouble on down the line. So that's another reason why I wanted to leave this um, all pretty much stock how it's supposed to bolt on other than it's a different fan. So I just wanted to make sure that I was clear on that and then clear on this uh, where you had to trim this out here on the inside and on this grill a little bit. So now we've got this thing all put back together. Um, all I got to do is put some coolant in it um, and she should be all good to go. But these modes, they do work. Um, so go ahead and try them. But make sure when you go in, um, you make the system better than what it was um, when you started. So that's usually my goal. If I can't make it better than what it was when I started, um, I put it back to factory because factory worked for them. It should be working for me too. So 
um, that's where we're at right now and um, I'll show you once I get the coolant and everything all mixed up pour back in bled all out we're gonna drive it for a little bit and she'll be all good okay so um, these modifications we've done to this Jeep here on the cooling system these are for these are upgrades to this system um, now if you have a, a, a problem with your system uh, these issues here that we've done here may not fix that problem you need to diagnose whatever the problem is with your system first and then go in and modify the system like this right here now if you're having an overheating problem um, and a lot of people they don't understand how a cooling system works actually on a on an automobile and so i'd like to give a little quick explanation of this um, such as a thermostat that we just replaced in here a lot of people think if, well if i put a 180 degree thermostat in there my car will run at 180 degrees well no that's not true because what's happening is you'll put a thermostat in here and usually generally out here in Arizona we run a high temperature thermostat 195 208 206 degrees something like that and what that does is that thermostat opens up and it allows coolant to flow through that cooling system however what the problem is is if you put a 160 degree thermostat in here that thermostat is basically going to be open all the time and you're going to have a constant flow through your cooling system now what that does is if you're sitting in rush hour traffic or just sitting there letting the car run it's going to keep that coolant's going to keep moving and keep moving and pretty soon what you're going to have is all the coolant in your cooling system is basically going to be the same temperature now what a thermostat does when it reaches your therm your temperature the temperature of that thermostat it will open up and allow flow likewise when that temperature goes back down that thermostat will close and what that does is it keeps fluid inside your radiator long enough so that it'll cool it down and then it'll flow back through the system to cool the rest of the motor down if your thermostat doesn't allow you enough time with the fluid in the radiator to cool it down then you're going to run into overheating issues and so that's one thing you need to know about a thermostat and that's pretty much the basic system for any kind of car whether it be an old one like this or a new car you know some of the new cars you got twin turbos stuff like that on them and you might have two cooling systems you might have a high temperature and a low temperature your low temperature is for your turbos and and the reason why they do that is because they need to cool that intercooler and to keep your turbos cool because they run very hot that's why there's so many hoses on them that's why there's so many fans and so many things on those cars to keep them cool because you have to remember uh, these systems uh, a lot of people will tell you oh you know I took my thermostat out and it runs great now well initially it might run you might think it's running great and it'll run cooler but you're going to be dealing with some overheating issues when that system is stressed with no thermostat in it and you also have to remember that the, the, the point of all these cooling systems and hoses and fans and everything else on this car is to get this car up to operating temperature so that it'll pass emissions. That's what it's all about. And that's why these cars, newer cars especially, have so many different things on them to control everything about it. If it doesn't see, a, a, like if your car is run for 200 seconds and it's not up to operating temperature it might throw a new a code on a newer car um, this car here it won't do that because it just doesn't have the sensors and everything on it to do that but a newer car it'll definitely do it um, so that's how the cooling system works on this thing right here it's pretty basic uh, but you want to make sure that all of the things you have on here are functioning properly before you go into and try to upgrade something um, you got to make sure that the system's operating properly before you do that. So now that's where we come in and we've added an electric fan. We've added the 11 blade fan over here. Um, so that should help that system out a lot more uh, for what we are doing with this particular vehicle right here. Okay, so um, just got this thing all back together. I uh, got coolant in it and everything got it all fired up. It's looking good. Um, so this system's all done here as far as the cooling goes. Um, just wanted to go over what I just did today. Um, I replaced the thermostat in it, not because it needed it, but because I had to go in there and take a look at it because I didn't know what temperature it was. 
and I wanted to put the highest one I could get in it, and that's what I just did. All new coolant in it, new thermostat, um, and then I put this fan and fan clutch back in here, and the electric fan. So um, you kind of saw how I did that, and you know I'm the type of person I I don't really like doing cutting jobs like this right here on my vehicles, but after watching some of what the other people do, I go, hey, um, you know, I might as well take a saw to this thing. So don't be afraid to do some little trimming and stuff like that to it. I'm not trying to remake this vehicle. I'm just trying to make it a little bit better than what it came from the factory. So now the cooling system's all good. It's all bled out and everything. It's ready to go. I'm ready to hit the trails with this thing. Um, I, I, I really enjoyed reading some of you guys' comments about my other videos, so keep it coming. Um, I enjoy some of the perspectives that everybody has. Um, so let me know um, what you think about the videos, if this helps you, if you're about to do a job like this or something, or if there's something I could add to it. Because I've done so much to this Jeep that you know I might redo or, or go back through and do again um, just to show some people some of the electronics on it. Um, and I do have another video that should be coming shortly um, about the solar system that we're putting on here. So uh, stay tuned for that. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Send me comments. I love the comments. So thank you very much. I appreciate everybody's uh, participation in those uh, first couple videos I let out. So thank you very much.